So I've got a blue shirt on now for, for what's coming up. The, there's wonderful news that we've got for everybody who's, who's listening. We're joined by somebody who's really, really special in uh, Steffi Vetter's uh, heart. And you're almost in tears there, Steffi. As I'm, we I'm welcome, so excited. <laughs> as we welcome from the bivouac in Saudi Arabia, Ross Branch. Rossi, thank you so much for joining us. It's an absolute privilege to have you with us. Hey guys, uh, thanks so much for having me on the show. Uh, sorry I've been a bit quiet lately. It's uh, been a, a hectic few days. <laughs> I can imagine. Rossi, I can't stop smiling. Hello. <laughs> hey Steph, how are you doing? <laughs> More to the point, how's that leg doing? Um, it's still there. <laughs> 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 uh, it's not so bad. Um, yeah, it's been been a rough couple of days, and uh, yeah, the guys here have, have been looking after me, and it's uh, getting getting better slowly. So, still a lot of work to do, and it's a little bit more serious than we thought, but uh, it's not so bad. <laughs> you know, Ross, you we you've got that positive attitude. It's a the laugh, the smile. That must have been a massive part. I, I don't know how the hell you do it. But it must mean a massive part in just helping you get through some of the the trauma, both in your leg and in your mind, because this was a mega disappointment for you. Uh, yeah, disappointment is an understatement. <laughs> I was uh, I was really planning on on putting everything I had uh, on the line for this one, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, it ended like it did. But uh, you know, I'm still lucky enough to. To be here, to be at the Dakar Rally, it's been a dream and it's a dream of many people to be here. So, you know, you just got to turn it around and unfortunately it is, it was, it is what it is and uh, you can't turn back time, but at least I can focus on, on 2022 and, and 2023 Dakar. So, yeah, it's uh, really disappointing and yeah, I was heartbroken, <laughs> but uh, it is what it is, you know, I think uh, everyone's worked so hard and um, I really wanted to go out on a high this one, but that's racing, I guess, and we just got to get back up and get back on the horse and just make sure we stay strong and stay fit and healthy. Uh, Ross, are you able to move around and walk reasonably sort of okay? Or is it a real battle? I know that you're having your leg treated uh, often during the day. Um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's what happened was um, I've got a small crack on my hip and then I've got uh, bleeding in the muscle of my thigh. So it just, it's just basically irritating, you know, it fills up with blood as soon as you stand on your feet. And... Uh, then you have to go and, and get and it drained, so I have it drained a couple of times. It's irritating. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you bike riders are... It's, are not, you... so, it's not so painful. <laughs> but but uh, yeah, it is, it is a bit irritating. And uh, But uh, yeah, Yamaha was really good. They got a little electric scooter, so at least I can, um, you know, move around a little bit. I think they saw the first day I was stuck in the camp. I wasn't really a happy guy, so... <laughs> <laughs> they gave me the scooter to cruise around on and yeah, at least I can go see everyone interact with everyone and uh, see how everyone else's uh, rallies going and you know my teammates are still in it and they're doing really well so yeah be here for the team and yeah missing everyone back home and uh, a huge huge thank you to everyone back home for the messages of support and they yeah, are keeping matching up so I really appreciate it uh, I don't think with uh, without the help of you guys and everyone back home it would have been a, a different situation for sure <laughs> I think, Ross, we've got to turn, it, uh, turn that um, comment on its head without someone like you there giving us the, the thrills, the entertainment, the tension, the, <laughs> the drama. The, it's been absolutely magnificent following this, this tribe of South Africans as you all have a massive impact, both on the bikes and in the cars, on, on this Dakar. It's magnificent to see how you guys are doing. No, thank you. It's uh, it's really incredible. Um, this is the first year I've seen such a such a huge presence from Southern Africa, and it's incredible. You know, we make like our own little city when we go to the dining hall, and it's so cool to just hear the accent. You know, <laughs> it's uh, it's really cool, and uh, yeah, I think it's it's super important for all of us because we each uh, you know keep each other going, and uh, everyone has their own little bit of advice for us for each day. So it's really really cool, and yeah, everyone's doing super well. I just wish I was also still in it. 
Rossi, I hope that you notice that I'm actually in Yamaha blue because I stuck to my guns. I'm back to <laughs> Yamaha. I did it, Andrew. But I want to ask you a question that I'm sure a lot of people are asking. So we were absolutely shattered when we saw what you know what damage you had done to yourself. How on earth did you do the stage the next day? Talk us through it just briefly. Because it's incredible. I mean, we in awe and we absolutely you're our champion, you know that. Thank you, Steph. Um, it was probably one of the hardest stages I've ever ridden to tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was. It started off really well. Uh, I think the painkillers were were in full effect in the morning, and uh, I managed to stay in the in the top ten. But um, yeah, it was just. Uh, you know, I, I had to give it a go for myself, for the team, and for everyone back home. You know, people that believe in me, I I didn't want to give up, and I just said to the team, the team didn't want me to ride straight off the rest day, and I just asked them to please give me one chance because. Um, I didn't want to go home with any regrets, you know, I didn't want to be at home or on the plane on the way home and say um, I could have maybe have done the next stage or, or I could have maybe not have done it, you know, and at least I gave it a go and I really wanted that and also just for my self-confidence, um, it was probably one of the biggest crashes I've ever had and I just wanted to make sure I could get on the ba back on the bike and, and still ride the speeds that we were going and make sure that there was nothing else blocking my mind or fogging my mind um, so I think that was one of the main reasons I knew I was already out the race and obviously that little bit of hope that they could have cancelled stage six completely was definitely <laughs> in the back of my mind <laughs> Russ, you know that you never leave anything on the table ever so um, as I said, from the love that came in for you onto just the Southern Africa Dakar group and I know that race day was the same was absolutely insane and you know that we hold you in the highest esteem and you really are such an inspiration. You're such an ambassador for Botswana and motorsport. And I, you know how much I love you, so I don't have to say it. <laughs> <laughs> thank got a you, proper Steph, fame girl yeah, Thank you, everybody. <laughs> help me I, can't, understand. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough. Help me understand. I know a little bit about cars, but I know nothing about bikes. And Steffi keeps talking about these tactics. It's almost like... <laughs> You want to go fast on a bike, but not finish near the front. You want to lose as little time so that you can like, follow the other guy. What are these tactics and stuff that, that Sam Sunderland has done so well that it looks like he's <laughs> in the pound seat? Yeah, it's, uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of strategy involved as well. It's not just racing, you know. So there's a couple of days that you, you know, especially with the information that the organizers give, give you, um, there's certain days that you do not want to be close to the front because if it's like a really technical navigation stage what often happens is the guys behind you will catch up to you where you when you lost looking for a waypoint and they'll catch up to you and then they'll uh, they'll use that um, you know they'll use that time to to catch up to you so for sure you ideally you don't really want to lead out on any of the days because you're definitely gonna lose time it's very unlikely these days that you could win two stages in a row so um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of strategy, and especially as today and yesterday, you could see um, there was a lot of strategy. So yeah, it's working out, and I'm happy for the guys. It's been a really tough and hard race, and everybody that's still in it deserves to be in it, and it's going to be a close finish tomorrow. So yeah, I think it's going to be exciting. Oh great! So it's you, what you're saying is that it's not over. I mean, I'm, if it was a car, and what I understand the <laughs> stages is relatively. Um, it's it's on track, so the dust and traffic is going to be a problem. Are you saying that um, from the on the overall side of it that Sam is not a shoe in, even though he's got um, a lead of uh, what's it, six odd minutes? Six Seven fifty-two. Minutes. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, this is Dakar. You know, it's uh, it can change in a heartbeat. For sure, he's 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 in a really good position, and he like I say, he really deserves it. But uh, it's never over till it's over. There's still 160 odd long Ks to go tomorrow and uh, nobody knows what it'll be like. It could be really tough navigation and with him being so close to the front, it's it's so easy to lose. Like, I mean, if you look at day one, all the top guys were losing 30, 40 minutes to an hour, you know, so it's really can go can go horribly wrong quickly today. I think uh, most of the top guys got lost at kilometer four. So you only need four or five Ks to, to really turn the race on its head again. Um, but for sure, I think tomorrow is, is, it can change anything for sure. But uh, Sam is definitely in a really good position. But I think the, the cool thing from a, um, a racing fan and from a motorsport fan 
is that we don't know. It's the, the beauty of any sporting event is you want to know the result must be in super doubt right until the end. And I look at this and probably the one with the, the most outside chances, um, uh, Joan Boreda, even um, Adrian von Beveren, 15 minutes, there's, there's still a chance. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's a, it's a slight chance, but it is definitely a chance. So I think, uh, yeah, strategically it's really difficult uh, to, to get it right. And I think KTM played a good game and they are in a really good position with both their riders. Uh, Honda, they've been fighting back from the beginning. So yeah, it's going to be a really interesting, interesting end. But like I say, I crashed at kilometre two. So <laughs> anything can happen. <laughs> I'm definitely uh, one that's not going to say that the race is over now. <laughs> <laughs> Ross, from your, your um, prognosis, time to... When are you going to get back on a bike? Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> not the electric one. I mean, a proper... Not the Vespa. Not the um, Botswana Vespa. <laughs> um, I'm not too sure yet. Uh, we'll just take it as it comes. It's... Uh, take you way longer than I thought already so we'll just play it by ear there's no rush uh, first round of the well second round of the world championship is on uh, um, on on the 5th of March so as long as I'm ready by then that'll be cool awesome Rossi I think from the whole of South Africa um, we wish you the absolute speed in in getting healed and may your leg come back stronger your head stay clear and the speed be there, and, and massive respect and thank you from, uh, from all of us at Race Day for what you've done to make our lives better through Dakar. And hats off to, for thank your you attitude. Guys. Thank you, and thank you very much no, for talking really, to us tonight. No, it's uh, my greatest pleasure. Sorry I haven't been on the show a bit uh, sooner. It was a little bit of a difficult hurdle to get over these last couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for all the support and, and everyone back home for believing in me and, and like I say, the wishes, the well wishes and the, the messages of support are incredible and I really appreciate it and yeah, without everybody's support back home, I definitely wouldn't be able to be living my dream and uh, I am super grateful and, and yeah, I can't thank you guys enough for having me on the show and Steph, thank you for everything you do for all of us, like I said, you, you're a star and uh, yeah, you, you're getting us home, so... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for everything. Almost. <laughs> Team Branch, I love you. And just get better soon, Rossi Ross. Go well, young Thank man. Thank you, guys. And thank we'll, you so much for having me. Thank we'll talk you. again. Cheers. Ciao, guys. Bye.